You don't need reality TV to tell you things are different in Louisiana. For one thing, the state isn't divided into counties, but parishes. And only one parish, St. Bernard, is affectionately known by locals as the Parish. Just like Stan Musial is the man. And there's your ball game. Just like Elvis is the king. Thank you very much. St. Bernard is the parish. It's the working class hero of Louisiana. And like the dog that shares its name, Bernard? St. Bernard has come to the rescue of New Orleans and the country on a couple of occasions. In fact, you can say that St. Bernard is the birthplace of America. You can say that. I, uh, that's... Yes. Not bad for putting words in my mouth. <laughs> Park rangers can't tell a lie. The truth about St. Bernard is that it's New Orleans' most historic neighbor. Not only is it home to one of the most significant battles in U.S. history, it has world-class fishing in a down-home setting. Good thing the fish wants to be on TV, we'd be in trouble. <laughs> and food that would remind you of home if your mom was a world-class chef. This is an appetizer. This is an appetizer. This is the type of place that can make mac and cheese a destination meal. It's heaven on a plate. If you go there, you'll discover that St. Bernard is the parish. And that's what I set out to do. All right, Tom, congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> I got five more minutes till I get gone. And there ain't no change in the road I I didn't know this at the time, but if you're heading to historical St. Bernard Parish, your tour guide should not be the lyrics of a song that topped the pop charts in 1959, especially if that song is the Battle of New Orleans. You know the song. In 1814, we took a little trip along with Colonel Jackson down the mighty Mississippi. Not accurate, but since St. Bernard is only a few miles from downtown New Orleans, a trip down the river is the way to go back in time. No colonel here, but I did go along with Master Captain Al Christian. What is the best way to get to the Chalmette Battlefield? Well, the one answer to that question is the Creole Queen Paddle Wheel, the boat that you're on right now. It's a must-do cruise when you come to New Orleans. In the wake of Old Man River, these paddle wheels are heading to Chalmette, Louisiana, leaving the city and the present behind and heading into history. The unique thing about the, the Battlefield Cruise is that it is a destination cruise. Come down to the uh, Chalmette Battlefield, put you in the hands of the United States Park Service Ranger, who gives you a great tour of the, the site where the Battle of New Orleans was fought. It's a three-hour destination cruise. I don't want to go all Gilligan on you, but historically, three-hour tours don't go that well. Even in the worst of, of weather, other than the hurricanes, uh, the boat handles quite well, so uh, in, in almost 30 years, we've never had a, uh, a Gilligan incident on the 3 Queen. Like all things in Louisiana, this trip would have its own special hospitality. Throughout the entire time on the cruise, you're entertained, you're fed. We have great bars, great drinks, the world famous hurricanes. This is the way to travel, kids. Seriously. For over 20 years, the master captain has piloted the Creole Queen, but the trip still amazes. The great thing about being a captain on the Mississippi River on this boat is that uh, I'm on one of the finest uh, river boats in the world, on one of the mightiest of rivers in the world, the Mississippi River. In this profession, it, it doesn't get too much better than that. Plus, the master captain has control of the ship's whistle. Once you pull it, don't just let it go. You need to hold it for five seconds. Then you're going to hold it for one, two, like that, OK? OK. All right, Tom, congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> Where's my hat? <laughs> oh, wait, there you go. I'll try it with the hat. There you go. There you go. you want to like do it again? <laughs> As Mark Twain said of life on the Mississippi, you think it's going to be just another cruise. 
until they blow the whistle. I knew Mark Twain was right as soon as I arrived at the Chalmette Battlefield. Now part of the Jean Lafitte National Historic Park and Preserve, this clearing along the river was the site of one of the most famous, yet misunderstood battles ever fought on American soil. The Battle of New Orleans was fought on January 8, 1815, the last major event in the War of 1812. In the shadow of the Victory Monument, a historic encore is orchestrated every year in January. The fact that this is a living history demonstration drifts away with the smell of gunpowder and smoky campfires. In period dress of both the victor and the vanquished, reenactors breathe life into a story that many of us, including myself, don't know completely. It was not as simple as a song. That infamous Johnny Horton song, which was a big hit in 1959, 1960. In 1814, we took a little trip along with Colonel Jackson down the mighty Mississippi. Well, they didn't come down the Mississippi. Andrew Jackson went over to Mobile, beat the British there, beat him in Pensacola, and then came by land over here. Chuck Paradin is passionate about discovering and revealing the truth about what happened here in Chalmette. So what's the biggest misconception of the Battle of New Orleans? Well, probably the biggest misconception, Tom, is that this battle was inconsequential, that it was fought after the treaty was signed and therefore didn't make any difference. That is so very wrong. This was probably the most consequential battle fought in American history, certainly fought on American soil. This battle was so important because the United States would not be what it is today if Andrew Jackson had made a stand here and defeated the British because they were going to take New Orleans, they were going to occupy and hold all of the Louisiana Purchase. So forget Manifest Destiny, forget everything that the United States of America became from sea to shining sea. Andrew Jackson right here on this battlefield in Chalmette, Louisiana, made the difference in what the United States of America became. On the morning of January 8th, the British advanced. It was a sea of red, but they weren't immediately seen. They could be heard, but it was when the fog lifted, and it lifted very quickly, suddenly there was a sea of red. And when the, as they came into range and the fighting commenced, it became a bloodbath. What wasn't red from the red coats was a sea of blood, and it was said that afterwards it was almost impossible to walk across this field without stepping on something red, a body part or a body. It was, it was that much of a slaughterhouse. For the next number of years, until the Civil War actually, January 8th was celebrated more highly with more fireworks and more celebrations than the 4th of July. It was a national holiday. I mean, so it was a day that people in the country recognized as a national holiday. And today, January 8th, is the day before the 9th. You can explore the details of the war at the Visitor Center. But for Chuck, it comes down to this. I'll give you the top three reasons we won this battle. Andrew Jackson, Andrew Jackson, and Andrew Jackson. Jackson, by preparing, 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 made all the difference in the world. He ordered that all of the bayous and all of the waterways be shut off. Put trees in them, fill them in with dirt, don't give the British any way to get in. Chuck knows something about how unprotected waterways can lead to great loss. He has seen it firsthand with the Coastal Protection and Restoration Authority. It's a perimeter defense that makes all the difference in the world. Jackson set up this line, it's almost like a big levee that stopped the flood of the British troops and were able to stop them. In Katrina, our perimeter defense wasn't adequate and the flood waters got in and we all saw what happened. What happened here was horrific. St. Bernard was the only parish completely flooded from Katrina and the post-storm levee failures. Out of about 27,000 homes, less than a half dozen were left habitable. In memory of the 163 people who perished here in St. Bernard, a monument now stands at Shell Beach. There is also a new line of defense that stands guard against the Gulf's wrath. It is the largest civil works project in the history of the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. So what we have done is we've built a bigger, stronger, better perimeter. And if you go right now, there's a huge surge barrier, the longest continuous surge barrier in the world across Lake Bourne and across Bayou Bienvenue. This is this is Bayou Bienvenue. This is where they came in. This is where the surge barrier is, right here. And we have that hurricane protection system, the big walls and the huge levees 
that now contain the entire system. That surge barrier is awesome. The whole hurricane protection system around New Orleans is now pretty awesome. New battle lines are drawn, and two of the most significant events in the country's history come together along the Louisiana coast. And St. Bernard remembers it all and remains standing. The roots that hold the people of St. Bernard to this land run centuries deep and across the Atlantic. In the tiny community of St. Bernard Village, these irreplaceable roots are exposed and exalted for, dare I say, their uniqueness. St. Bernard Parish is unique. I'll say this, that it's a unique history. And unique is a word that's very much overused, but we truly are unique because only here in St. Bernard did people become hispanized. Only here in St. Bernard did people embrace the Spanish culture, Spanish language, Spanish traditions. The Spanish settle in Louisiana is very rarely spoken of. And what they contributed to Louisiana is amazing. You hear a lot about French in Louisiana, but you don't hear too much about Spanish. Unless you visit the historic Islanos Village and Cultural Center, where the last vestige of Spanish colonial Louisiana is not only preserved, it is lived daily. These are the descendants of settlers from the Canary Islands who came to Louisiana between 1778 and 1783. To make a long story short, the Canary Islanders were brought here to populate Louisiana and to defend Louisiana against British colonial expansion west of the Mississippi River. They settled in four locations strategically placed to protect New Orleans. St. Bernard was the largest and most successful, and it has retained to the largest extent its distinct cultural and historic identity to the present. The Islano identity has been formed by a complex blending of Canary Island culture and coastal survival. That identity is now on display at the Village, Museum, and Nature Walk. At the heart of the village is the story of a people who are quick with a joke or a hug and are always ready to celebrate their culture. And no celebration is bigger than Los Islanos Fiesta. We've had a, an Islano Fiesta every year since 1976 including 2006, just six months after Katrina. And we've never missed a beat. That beat is the rhythm of traditional 18th century Canary Island choruses and dance troops. At the Fiesta, you can dance if you want to, but then you might not be able to truly appreciate the costumes and the choreography. With every moment and every stitch, there is tradition. Each costume that you see, like causes, it either represents a different island or a different uh, village on the islands. Hus represents Grand Canary. Mine, this is more or less a dress for the fiestas and things like that. And a sash is good if you're eating all that good food. It right. hides. It holds your belly. <laughs> food is a big part of everything in Louisiana, and the fiesta is no different. But that's where the similarities end and the Spanish flavor comes through. See, the king of Spain knows what he's doing. Instead of serving jambalaya, there is paella, a Spanish dish that blends rice, seafood, sausage, and meat. There is also the Spanish tortilla, a ginormous frittata-like dish made with thinly sliced potatoes, onions, peppers, garlic, chorizo, and eggs. Man! You know what that is? I'll tell you what that is. That's an entire New Orleans brunch in one spoon. Yeah. You know, some nice bread and some good wine. Hey. Good wine in the morning? In Spain, we start to drink wine at 9 a.m. Yeah. The wine is the whole day. Like, like over here, tea. It's, you know. it's like tea. Yeah. yeah. Wine is like tea. It's a medicine for people. I <laughs> like the way you guys do business. <laughs> <laughs> Here is a place where you can feel history, taste its flavor, and dance to its beat. I feel that heritage. I feel that, 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 that warm feeling, you know, that, uh, 
gets emotional. <laughs> You're tearing up a little right now. Right. The Islanos traditions are only as strong as the community. And maybe that's why this community out, right? is so welcoming. The more visitors experience their spirit and come to appreciate this unique way of life, the better chance that this, the last vestige of Spanish Louisiana, will endure. To discover what the people of St. Bernard have known for centuries, just take a little trip out of Shell Beach and head out to the bayous. There ain't nothing like fishing in Louisiana. Probably the best place in the world of this. For generations, the Nunez family has lived and fished the waters of St. Bernard. I started coming out here 10, 11 years old with my dad. I've been fishing ever since. Oh, I love being on the water. Only Captain Johnny's resume and the promise of generously high catch limits could get me up before dawn. But I was up and in the boat. Let's see if we can get them going. Now I just had to get the fish to follow. That's a good cast if you'd have had bait on it. The bait's over here. Known as the fishing magician, Captain Johnny knows how to make the fish appear right before your eyes. Caught 150 right here for 730, which was good. I mean, but I'm only good as the people. You know, they catch them, you know, I mean. But if we're relying on my skills, we're going to need more than just magic. You need to practice on that casting. <laughs> You're the magician. Yeah, but I'm not a miracle worker, I mean. <laughs> yeah, maybe you are. Easy, easy, easy. We're not fishing tuna here. <laughs> All right, I got excited. <laughs> With a few pointers from the captain, I was able to conjure up some keepers of my own. You're trying too hard. I'm trying too hard. Yeah. Oh. Ah. Who wants to be on TV? There you go. Just witness miracle on TV. Really? Getting up early in the morning, catching fish, and catching flack. <laughs> catching more <laughs> flack than fish at this point. But it's gonna change. Meanwhile, the magician was pulling everything out of the water. Nothing like fishing in Louisiana, huh? St. Bernard. There's a reason why this area hosts a variety of big time fishing tournaments. Because this is where the fish are being caught. Even by me. Good thing the fish wants to be on TV, we'd be in trouble. <laughs> Get him in, Get, swing it this way. There you go. What does it prove <laughs> on a day like this that we're actually still catching with my ability? You know, it's hard not to come home without any fish. I mean, even with you, you know, I mean. <laughs> Here we go. Let's go home. We got lunch, dinner, and breakfast tomorrow. We've done more before 9 a.m. than most people do all day. We've got a cooler full of fish, we've had some laughs, and we've seen the beauty and the abundance of the coast. I just get up and watch the sunrise. That's enough right there. From the Gulf right to your plate. And if you're at the Louisiana Crawfish Festival, it may not even hit your plate. What are you serving up here that people are waiting in line for? It's a hot, stuffed, freshly uh, baked bread stuffed with a crawfish uh, cream sauce topped with cheese. Awesomeness in one hand. Oh. You can't tell us what's in there, though, right? No, it's a secret. <laughs> nope. we'll have to <laughs> Celebrating the state's star crustacean, the Crawfish Festival is the biggest outdoor event in St. Bernard. They have some 100,000-plus uh, people visit this on a four-day event. But don't be mistaken. This is not your usual fair fair. This ain't no corn dog. No, sir. What's in this? You can't tell no, me, can you? No, I'd have to kill you. What is it with? St. Bernard, every, every recipe is protected by death. It's secret. We have a secret organization funded by the Illuminati. <laughs> you like that? I like that. You coming to my restaurant now? 
6129 East Sabre on Highway. Yes, I'm coming. And I'm bringing national food writer and New Orleans food goddess, Lauren Godin, with me. Lauren studied in Paris, but she goes where great food is. I, I'm, a, I'm an I'm an eat with my hands kind of gal, so I hope y'all don't mind. That's eat it up. And Charlie's restaurant in Violet, Louisiana, has an abundance of great food. What makes Saint Bernard food? Saint man, Bernard the, sea, food. the seafood industry, man, it's beautiful. The best seafood in the world is right here in Saint Bernard. What do you think is it that special something? I think it's that river. It's what Chad does with seafood that makes Charlie's worth the trip. This is a barbecue shrimp, one of our new signature dishes here. We have charbroiled oysters two ways. We have a garlic and herb, and we have a Cajun cream. Delicious. Yeah. Amazing. Let me know about the, uh, which oyster you like the best. OK. It's all good. That's okay. <laughs> it's, well, like choosing, that. it's like choosing between your kids. <laughs> Impossible. <laughs> Impossible. With a menu filled with over 300 local favorites, choosing at Charlie's can seem like mission impossible. But try the gumbo. Mm, heavenly. Really, really good. Well, thank you all very much. Oh, my goodness. You know, no. should dine here more often. We should. I love coming down the road. I love eating down here. It's best. Great people, great food. It's the love of food. It's a way of life. It is a way of life. Do you look forward to coming to work every single day? I mean, is there a day this like is not even work for me. That's the beauty of it. The beauty of dining in St. Bernard is the options are plentiful, and the welcome is always like family. Us down here in the south is just like in southern Italy where our family's from. Come on in. Where you want to sit. We're going to serve this for you all day long. Don't worry about it. We'll take care of it. In Chalmette, Rocky and Carlos is more than a restaurant. It's an icon. And women are invited. One woman has been there since the beginning, the unstoppable Nana Geo. I started in the morning, six o'clock. I go to home at eight, eight thirty, nine o'clock. So what's good? Macaroni, bio parmigiano, bacon chicken, seafood de gambo, onion ring. We opened in April of 1965, and it was five families. Five families all came from Italy. And today, their descendants treat everyone like they belong here. And you do, if you have an appetite. Oh, nobody leave hunger here because we give a lot of food, and everybody says that. Servings are huge, prices are small, and one dish is as famous as Andrew Jackson around here. One of the most beautiful things I love about Rocky and Carlos is their baked macaroni and red gravy. Why? Because that red gravy is made with heart and soul and a lot of garlic. Anybody that comes in here, we know they say red sauce. We know they're not from Louisiana or from New Orleans. It's rich and it's creamy. And then you have the sweetness of the red sauce, which kind of exemplifies that marriage of Italy and St. Bernard Parish. And you mix that with the creaminess. I don't know, it's heaven on a plate. Somewhere in this food is the secret to a happy life. Oh, yes. I think somewhere in there is the secret to a happy <laughs> life. <laughs> It's hard to beat a place where a family serves portions as big as their hearts. As we ate our way across St. Bernard, our final stop brought us full circle, back to seafood. This is today's catch, just hours old, out the wall. And like everything here, today's catch does things a little different. Catch is spelled with a K, K-E-T-C-H. Mm -hmm. Quite unique, as is the culture here. What today's catch does is seafood. Well, we carry a, a fresh line of live, boiled, and cooked seafood, just about anything you really need. And of course, we, uh, we get seafood in from our local waters here daily. This is an appetizer. This is an appetizer. Hey, this is tradition here, buddy. I mean, this is what we're about. We see people coming here three and four days a week and get the same thing. I tell them, guys, this is not ice cream. You're not getting tired of it? No, man, keep it going, you know what I'm saying? I mean, this is, this is what we're all about here. We're all about crawfish, crabs, and shrimp. Wait till you have that. That'll change your life. That's a life-changing shrimp. But today, today's catch is about the crawfish. You got to suck the head. Come on, Squeeze you it. can do Crush it. it. Squeeze Crush it. it. You gotta squish it. Woo, buddy. That's good. Mm -hmm. Oh, that is good. Don't get no better. It's I'm, all good. It's all good. I'm eating like I just got out of jail. <laughs> 
I think we might want to do a criminal check on our guests from now on. We're ready to Really good. <laughs> People coming here from all over says our crawfish is like no other. It's amazing. Good, you good. can really taste the lemon, you can taste a little bit of bay, and you can taste celery, and then the beautiful sweetness of the seafood itself. Uh, you did a yeah, so magic. But that's your taste buds yum, and yum. your brain. What does your heart feel when you taste this? Oh, man. Like a die went to heaven. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Luckily, St. Bernard is a lot closer. You come down to St. Bernard because this is where the story begins. Um, for the seafood, for the people, which are amazing, it's a whole experiential thing. And that's why you get in the car and you drive the coast. That's why you head downriver. Not blue blood, but blue collar. A place that welcomes you with open arms. The St. Bernard Parish is like a big family here. There's more than history here. There's a chance to create your own history. One story at a time.